Welcome to uh, the Cyples Motorcycle Ministry Headquarters in Kristiansand. Yay! We are having a little visitors here today. <laughs> yeah! <Yay! Woo! laughs> and uh, <laughs> there's a little visitor. <laughs> there's a few of them here <laughs> from Oslo today. So it's been an uh, awesome trip for you guys, I guess. Huh? <laughs> and the fish. And, and the, the dog. The <laughs> <laughs> hey, Zuka! <laughs> All right, well, I will go out here and leave you guys alone. <laughs> so I just wanted to uh, give you a little message today on this Tuesday um, that have been on my heart. And uh, first of all, uh, it's a beautiful day here. We call it uh, barbecue by the riverside over here. We have uh, here's our barbecue and uh, we just love the summertime here so uh, now the trees start to get green again and uh, we are very happy for uh, the season that is coming up so uh, i just wanted to um, to uh, send you a little greeting from uh, disciples here down south in norway and um, i am happy to to say that uh, all the disciples uh, are blessed. They have uh, not been sick in these times, and uh, it has been um, it has been uh, good times for them. And uh, we uh, will pray that it will continue like this. That no one in disciples and the people around will have uh, this virus or uh, have any illness problem. Amen. So join us in prayer for that. But we still pray for our brothers and sisters that uh, also in France that uh, have big problem with this. Uh, so that God, he will uh, continue to be there for them and bring them through in the name of Jesus. So uh, I just uh, hope you, you guys are okay. I hope that you are with good health too. And... Uh, uh, send us your prayer requests if you um, have something special on your heart that you want us to pray for so um, we have a prayer chain that goes worldwide so um, help us uh, help you if you if we in any way can can do that okay so thanks um, short um, my story um, I ended up with a crew. Uh, we'll make my story short because uh, if there's a lot of people that heard that 100 million times, as they say, so <laughs> I will not bring that up again. But um, but I came. Uh, I ended up with a crew that uh, was not just uh, uh, good for me, and uh, I was not good for them. Or and uh, they had um, uh, they had this thing that they wanted to live hard and uh, that um, we're not going to live until after 30 because we didn't want to get old we want to go out with a bang like they said and um, so we lived uh, life hard and uh, and rough but um, uh, i got saved <laughs> jesus saved me and uh, i didn't uh, expect that to happen because i have tried uh, uh, to believe because I had seen my mother become uh, saved and uh, I saw what change that did in her so I was thinking uh, that there must be a God you know but uh, but I didn't uh, I really didn't get uh, a breakthrough so I didn't uh, I didn't get my heart committed and I didn't understand that it was real 
so um, so I kept on doing uh, the things that I shouldn't do uh, but when I got saved it was uh, it was something special it was uh, amazing feeling that uh, that came I was told that if you open up your heart you will uh, and you start talking to him he will answer but you be you, you got to be for real you got to be honest in your heart and um, uh, so I was thinking okay I got nothing to lose so um, and in this uh, just in these days when I was turning myself to him we had done some bad stuff and the police was after me and I was thinking man if you don't do this for real um, then uh, I will continue to do whatever I do and I believe it will end up badly. So you got to shake out all the bad in me, all the, um, everything that um, uh, that gives uh, a hold, keeps a hold on me for uh, doing this uh, bad stuff. So please, uh, God, if you are there, okay, uh, shake out all the hatred, all, uh, all the violence, all the bad out of me and uh, and he he came he came it was like uh, a power that was coming inside of me it was like electricity from above that really when it hit my heart it was like explosion out to my fingers out to my toes and uh, I start sobbing and crying like I haven't done since I was uh, a little boy at least not uh, as anybody was seeing it <laughs> I was sobbing and uh, I really had an experience of um, uh, of the love of the Father. It was like when I received Jesus as Lord, it was like he just opened the gate to heaven and I met the Father himself, uh, the, our heavenly Father. And when he embraced me, oh, it was the love that you never experienced. Uh, it's uh, the, the love just melted the hatred away, all the sin away, uh, nothing bad could stay in me or in my thoughts after this it was uh, an amazing experience and as long as i keep close to him uh, it stays that way and that's a, a fantastic experience this could have ended a whole lot of different and uh, this could it could have been the end of the story uh, that i didn't receive him and uh, when you see all the bad that was happening up through the years also uh, it could have ended a whole lot of whole lot different than it did and uh, uh, it but it wasn't that way the story was supposed to end so uh, so if you have heard about there is a wonderful wonderful story that uh, about Goliath and most of you guys have heard the story about Goliath and we think man that's an awesome story little David coming with his slingshot and uh, bringing down the giant you know <laughs> killing the giant even uh, chops off his head you know <laughs> but um, I don't think the story started there if you start reading you know he was actually anointed for uh, being king and uh, uh, and when you know that's David he was 17 years old when he uh, he took the slingshot and brought down uh, the Goliath so uh, you know a teenager like that uh, he could have uh, he could have uh, had all this teenager what do you say uh, reactions as our teenagers have today and he's like man i don't want to they're dragging their feet and i don't want to do what their daddy says because it was the daddy that was sending him uh to the front you know and uh bringing bread and cheese for the for his brothers and uh, <clears throat> when he got there even the brothers they was mocking him you know and making fun of him and uh so he had a lot of small battles in between and he could he could have taken it out and said that man <laughs> i am anointed for being king for crying out loud so here i am a delivery boy for my brothers <laughs> anybody could have uh, got a got a fit of that and uh, not wanting to do it but that would have really 
uh, and the outcome of the story. But he knew who he was believing in and, and he didn't even know that Goliath was going to be at the front that day. He probably had been there with bread and cheese a lot of times, but uh, this time when he's coming, um, the Goliath is there. And uh, he's threatening his people, not only he's mocking his God and and uh, he uh, get aggravated about that. So we know that Saul also wants to put on uh, armor. He said that, man, you're just a little boy. He could got offended and he could have really gone back and uh, uh, and. Uh, he could uh, just said that, man, no, this is not for me. <laughs> I don't want to listen to all this uh, anymore. I just want to go home. And uh, but still, he was aggravated about things because of uh, uh, because of what they said, what Goliath said about uh, about the God of Israel. So so he went against him and. Uh, they want to put on him sword and uh, all this armor and everything. And he said, nah, those things just slow me down. I have been fighting both bear and lion when I watch the sheep, but uh, uh, I, I will I will take him down my way. And he brought his slingshot and uh, he found the best stone and he uh, got Goliath down. And he used his own sword uh, to cut his head off. So uh, this day, it says in uh, in First Samuel 17 verse 50, it says that uh, the Israelite had a big win, a victorious win over the Philistines. So uh, yes, their their own sword they brought to the fight brought them down in the end. Uh, but because of what God did and what He uh, wanted the story to uh, to be like so um, so it's like this uh, also uh, for us who who is writing your story who is writing yours and my story I know how my story ends because I know who's writing it I took a decision and made Jesus Lord and Savior of my life. And he opened up heaven and he opened up the relationship uh, with the Father for me that I have never experienced anything like. No father on this earth can uh, be equal to him. And he really cares if you let him. So um, you can let him write your story too. And I can promise you it will be a victorious one. The circumstance and everything around can sometimes look like it's not uh, looking victorious. But I can promise you, when he is writing the story, then it will be victorious. So in the start, it was me and the devil that wrote my story. And I can promise you, it would not end well at all. Uh, and a lot of things didn't w end well. I had to... I had to struggle with a lot of stuff for a long time afterwards, but but still I knew that through the struggles I was not alone anymore. He was with me and he was giving me the solutions for how taking care of each problem one by one by one. So do you know who is writing your story today? Do you know how your story ends? Because I believe that the only victorious way to end your story is to let him be the story writer. So I had gone towards my head several times. I almost died a few times. But every time he brought me out of it. He gave me wisdom in the moment that I, I am still today surprised about. I got word in the moment that solved a couple of situations that I was in. But uh, uh, he always brought me out of it. He gave me what I needed in the situation uh, where I needed it. And uh, that's how it is to live with him. So uh, if you want to be part of it, you need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. Let him start writing your story. 
because it will be victorious. Let him open up the gates of heaven like he did to me and uh, meet the Father, meet his love, be in his arms and just feel his love, feel everything just melt away of hatred and uh, worries and uh, all the things of this world that troubles you. Okay? So uh, <clears throat> let him write the rest of your story. Then it will be peace and not worry. It will not be fear that uh, rules you or your life. If you make a decision about this today to make him Lord and Savior, you can just invite him in and just uh, uh, let him know that, okay, Lord, I give my life to you. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I want you to start to write on my story from now on. Change my path, change the ways that I am and that I live in. And uh, I promise you, Lord, I will follow you every step that you lead me to. And you know something? If you make that decision right now, let us know. Let us know. Give me a little note or a message and uh, we will get in contact with you. Or some of our people who are close to you will get in contact with you. Okay, that would be awesome. So, I uh, hope that you take that decision today. And uh, leaves it up to him to write your story. Because uh, he uh, he's not... He is not going out of this world without being victorious. I can promise you that. He uh, he made a place for us. He made heaven for us. And um, I believe that uh, it will be pretty similar as it is here. I think when he created the earth, when he created everything around us, as you can see here, it's awesome by the river. Uh, he created it in his image. It says that he created us in his image. So I believe that the rest of it also is in his image. So. I don't think the heaven will be so much different. You will see a lot of the same things, but without all the viruses and all the illness and sickness, I think it will be fantastic to to see what he prepared for us. But until then, we are living in this world and uh, you can live with him also here. You can let him lead you by uh, each step of the way. And uh, these steps are... Uh, Sometimes you got to make them in uh, faith. Uh, you got to step out there and you don't know what meets you. But I can promise you that he will guide you and he will lead you. And it will be an exciting life instead of the normal 40, 40, 40 as people live, you know. Uh, yeah, 40 hours a week in 40 years for 40% 40 of what they earn the other years. <laughs> That's what people in this world live by but I can promise you when you put everything into his hand it, you are also blessed and uh, it will increase in a way that you didn't see possible too he will be with you in all kind of ways and if you take a step towards him to meet him you will see that he will do miracles into your life too so uh, you are a blessing you are really a blessing and you are loved and um, if you start being an outstretched hand to the people around you, you will see that uh, he will start using you in your everyday life. So uh, I just wanted to uh, wish you a great week. <laughs> I don't know if that was the right English, but uh, uh, I hope you will have a fantastic, awesome week that comes up. And I hope that you got something out of this message. Uh, so uh, let him start writing your story and you will see a change. Amen. So Jesus, he is Lord. Have a great week, everybody.